earlier today I did a video uh, in which I was giving out s some advice to you know landlords, any landlords that happen to follow me or find this video. Uh, as a former landlord, multi-door, uh, uh, you know, units and so on, and uh, and single-family re residences that I'm no longer involved in for several reasons, but the biggest one is that the numbers are not are beginning to not pencil. I gave out the numbers, and for some reason, TikTok thought this was like a, a personal attack for some reason. It's not. It's just straight math that I'm explaining here. Um, so I'm going to revised that video by doing this video and just explaining what I said in the first video, I guess, differently, I suppose. Anyway, the numbers break down like this. The party is kind of over for landlords. Um, this idea that the, 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 the numbers are not there, the amount of money that, that, that these guys are spending on houses and then hoping to get back in rents, that's not going to work any longer. The median household income in the U.S. is 74580 that is a straight Google search. Anybody can look that up. Um, now that's with oftentimes with two people working, okay, full time. Now what that means is that after you take out taxes, you know, let's just be be on it. Let's just say it's only twenty percent. That still leaves about just under sixty thousand dollars a year to pay all your bills, okay. Now so if you're trying to get like three thousand dollar a month rent out of people, right? Remember the median. When I explain to you the median income. Median means that half of the country is below that. That's what that means. The other half is above that. Well, if you're only going to try and focus on the people that are above that, the problem is you're going to run out of those people very rapidly because many of them, of course, they can afford houses. They're not, they can afford to just buy them themselves or they can build or what have you. So what, what I was explaining, right, is that most of these things are going to become start becoming very unprofitable, especially as your taxes and your insurance and everything continue to rise. Okay, now, this was seen for some reason as a personal attack. Uh, I'm not attacking anybody. I'm sh doing the math. Okay, as people, you know, you're you're what's going to end up happening is you're going to be stuck with well, okay, well we can try and find super qualified people to, you know, to, to get into these, into my property. Like, well, okay, but credit scores are going to continue dropping. Again, this is not an attack. I'm not attacking anybody. I'm, I'm stating this is how triage works. Triage operates like this. People will first stop paying credit cards. Then they will stop paying, you know, on, on their, on their cars. They're already seeing this on the toys, right? You know, your challengers, you know, um, and all, all the, all the cars that, that people, you know, weekend cars, those are all getting, you know, a bunch of them are getting repoed now. This is how triage works. This is going to start affecting credit scores. Credit scores will continue to drop, right? And what ends up happening is, is you're going to be, be faced with, okay, do I, do I just try and section eight everything? You know, apparently, maybe that's what people, they got upset about was me pointing out that, well, there's a lot of people that are undocumented um, that you may end up, you know, having to figure out how you're going to, and, and like, once again, like, why would, why would they care what happens to your property? Right. This is the same. This is the problem. Remember, the United States was never intended to be a nation of renters. It was never designed or intended for that. The founders didn't want that. You're, it's supposed to be individual people owning their property. That is the way of things, and that's the way that you want it, actually. Because for those of you that get all, all amped up about the the culture war, for example, well, it doesn't help if you've got a whole nation of people that are renting. That, that doesn't help. People who own, and I've covered this, there's a, I, 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 there's a video I did where I just pointed out straight out, like who makes money in this country? Who takes care of the country? Who does all this stuff? It's people who own. That's where, that's where it comes from. So when I point out that the median incomes are not going to keep up with all of these rents that you're trying to get, my suggestion is to get out of it as quickly as possible. I know the gurus on YouTube, and I know the gurus that are at the air, at the airport Marriott or the you know the Westin Grand Ballroom that are doing all this. I get it. These guys are all telling you that they're that you're going to be able to be rich and 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 just keep this thing going. It's not. It's not. The numbers aren't there. We're regressing to the mean. The birth rate is 1.3 in the U.S. Okay, one one point excuse me 1.63 per female in the U.S. When they do it again, it probably will be something like 1.4 per female. That is a decline, okay? That's a decline. So this idea that, that things are going to be able to continue to go, to go up, that is just not the way it is. 
Okay, I mean, why do you think you're seeing everything happen now? All of this is happening because there are not enough people, there's not enough Gen X, Millennials, and Zoomers on the back end of this to support any of these ridiculous fantasies that, that boomers had. Okay? It's not an attack. I'm not attacking anybody. I'm, I'm explaining the math. Okay, this has to be understood. And there was a, you know, I just, I got a ton of comments and people asked like, well, like for example, they said, where did you get the, the data on median household income? Dude, that is a straight Google search. That's the first thing that will pop up is if you type in, what is the median household income in the US? It'll say 74,580. It's right there. Um, these numbers don't lie. And by the way, because people are below that line, okay, so remember, half of the country is below that, all right? That means that these numbers of, of trying to get these ridiculous rents are not going to work, right? Many of you are, have overpaid for these properties, like grossly overpaid for these properties. I would tell you to fire sale these things as quickly as possible while you can still get out of them, right? And, and for, for those, there was some guy also who commented about, uh, you know, but this is for BlackRock. No, no, not at all, actually. There's nothing that says that you have to sell these houses to BlackRock. You can find people who want to buy them and live in them, right? Not sell them to a broker who's trying to broker it for a broker, you know, and put it on contract and all that. Dude, there's so many, like, I, I could do an entire channel just on real estate scams. <laughs> I mean, there's so many of them. I, I've been, when you do this long enough, you just, this is what ends up happening. So, I'm just trying to explain, all I wanted to point out, yeah, I know you're a good bird, huh, yeah. So all I was pointing out was that that was the case. My suggestion, this is a strong financial suggestion, right, is that if, you, if, you're, if, they're, if your rental properties still pencil, okay, keep them, right, if, as long as they still pencil and you're able to stay below market. But if you're gonna have to go above market, like to the point where it's ridiculous, then my suggestion would be, you know, to, to just cut bait, move on. There are other things you can go do with your money, and real estate isn't one of them. I would be avoiding it like the plague, especially with, with everything that's going on.